Evening. That applies to me. Oh no, not you. Not you. Well, first of all, I just want to say good evening to everyone, and we're so happy for our first of my first lady, who we love so much. So I'm just going to share a little bit about her on this evening. Amen. <laughs> the day and time is nothing until shaped by pivotal societal contributors parties that cause changes, controversy, or make other societal impacts. Additionally, days and time are marked by significant events and occurrences or otherwise. On Sunday, the 12th day of April in the year of our Lord, 1959, a one little Miss Anastasia Marie Mitchell became the third born and youngest daughter in her family after her sisters Loretta and Jarita. She was born to whom we will affectionately call Mama Ruth and George Mitchell. People came from near and far to see this little miraculous one. There's tale that even three wise men showed up at the hospital door on that fateful day, but they were looking for their Uncle Delbert down the hall. <laughs> Originally, it was thought that little Anastasia was just a very uncomfortable case of gas. That, uh, that is, until the doctor delivered the news that her mother, Mama Ruth, was indeed with child. After a few choice words and some moments of reckoning, her mother finally settled with the exciting news that she would again be welcoming a little Holy Ghost-filled bundle of joy. <laughs> there wasn't a bottle of my Lanta in the whole town that could get rid of her. Like the popular Diana Ross tune, she was coming out. First Lady Diana Ross is someone whose claim to fame was, oh, never mind, I'll tell you. <laughs> On the ride home from labor and delivery, as her mother looked into her eyes, she felt a quickening in her spirit and knew this baby would be different. As if the sequin suit, Berkshire stockings, and donut on her head are fair giveaways. Some of the fun facts associated with this birthday are less fun and more just facts. Most of them were controversial, being about war or strife about the world and some kind of civil unrest. Funny thing is, that is our everyday life as we walk with Jesus. Every day is a fight, sometimes up, sometimes down, almost level to the ground, but as First Lady Richardson will gladly tell you, she is not tired yet. However, as for the year 1959, the, year, the yearly infl inflation rate and the USA was 1.01%. The average cost of a new house was $12,400. Average yearly wages were $5,010. The cost of a gallon of gas was 25 cents. The average cost of a new car was $2,200. Wow. A movie ticket was $1. A loaf of bread was 20 cents. A Kodak camera, movie camera was $67.50. And ironically, not too far off from today, ladies' stockings were one dollar, mm. which proves that it's always cost to be uncomfortable. <laughs> I heard a word there. Shabba dabba doo. <laughs> Since the day of her birth, and as of today, she has successfully lived twenty-one thousand nine hundred twelve days. Wow! If she slept, if she slept for eight hours a night, effectively being thirty-three. 33% of her life, like most normal human beings, she would have slept a total of 7,304 days or 20 years by now. But we know she probably takes hour and a half cat naps ever so often. Oh, so she has probably slept a total of 1,825 days or five whole years in her lifetime. Amazing. Little Anastasia's mother, being the whip that she was, eventually followed her entrepreneurial exploits, exploits to Chicago. She was the definition of a strong black woman. And like James Brown said, she didn't take no mess. Well, First Lady James Brown was an artist and singer. <laughs> <laughs> Since Mama Ruth knew she would be on the move, that meant that little Anastasia would be raised in Memphis by her grandmother, Mother Harper. This would affect her spiritual life, dating life, church work, and no doubt, her accent. She has lived in Chicago for decades, but every now and again, you will still hear Memphis. It's like putting your ear up to a seashell where you can still hear the, hear the ocean. It's incredible. 
<laughs> Though her mother had left for Chicago, there were still remnants of Mama Ruth there in Memphis. How do you mean, Latoya, you might be asking? Well, little Anastasia grew up fostering a love for the Lord, but still had a two-edged sword for a tongue, though she didn't and doesn't use it to cuss like Peter. She did not operate in her feelings, nor was she moved by oversensitivity. She was a young woman of logic and rightly processed reality for what it was, nothing more, nothing less. She will tell you that her sister Jarita might have consumed all of the remaining mo emotions that were left in the womb because there were little to none left for her at her. <laughs> Legend has it that when she was born and the doctor spanked her, she looked up at him, frowned, and said, all right, now you got what you needed, now go on. <laughs> the doctors were stunned. <laughs> In her adolescent years, a young Anastasia attended school with the locals. It was full of heathens and unsaved scoundrels. She couldn't have been more uncomfortable in their unholy midst. But his rod and his staff, they comforted her. While they attended school dances, she did the holy dance. While they drank at the fountain to get water, she had holy water. And while the janitor mopped with Murphy's oil, she had holy oil. She had to take heed lest she fall. However, she would encounter some people at school that she was able to stomach and build friendships with them. There were even a few boys who would approach her every now and again with corny pickup lines while she switched classes, like, excuse me, may I carry your Bible for you? <laughs> wow, you look great today, how great thou art. Or even, girl, if we got to die daily, I want to put you in my will because I certainly never won't. It was at this point that she would resist the, de the devil and they would flee. I imagine she thought to herself, gee, I can't stand when those boys try to use those pickup lines on me. I mean, honestly, who likes that? Only what you do for Christ will last. A young Anastasia found this to be ever more true in her life with, from her dutiful work under Bishop W.L. Porter to one of the strongest bases of sisterhood I have personally ever witnessed. Having just two biological sisters, Anastasia is part of a sister circle league that started out with 12 holy women. More than fellow church members, work partners, or even friends, these women love one another deeply like sisters whose bond has never waned. Young Anastasia's sister circle was certainly God-ordained. Having a circle, circle of strong women who are in love with the Lord, love one another, and are strong without becoming unhinged by one another's strides, and successes is a blessing like none other. It takes a mighty strong woman to surround herself with strong and stronger women, giving no thought whatsoever to in any insecurities or feelings of defeat. There ought to be a movie made about them. This circle is consistent of Michelle, Jarita, Kathy, Anastasia, Melody, Michelle, Eleni, Beverly, Alice, Taharia, and deceased Valerie and Sam but all of whom were rarely, are rarely acknowledged in moments of love and celebration, but rather sadness and remembrance. So we seek to break that on tonight and recognize this unflawed friendship for the blessing that it is. Together, these women have overcome some of life's greatest feats, trials, and issues by staying connected to one another, praying, fasting, and Anastasia. That might not be true, but it's her birthday, so it's true tonight. In her work under Bishop Porter, the young Anastasia's gift for managing major projects, facilitating and delegating responsibilities, keeping order and operating in excellence was recognized and honed. She was effectively clay being shaped by the powder, which turned out beautifully, but not without some pain. Bishop Porter was an integral character in young Anastasia's church work and commitment to the church. She learned, she learned well, and executed her duties and still found herself receiving critical feedback from the bishop from time to time. But she never stopped working. She would compose herself, review her work, and try again until she got it right. Sometimes to get the emotions out of the way, she would call her sister Jarita to cry for her. But she would hang up mid-call because she doesn't like emotions. She still felt better in the morning. <laughs> One day, however, the penchant she had for church work was overcome by the reproach she had been receiving, and she actually cried. 
That day, the bell of the temple rent in two. <laughs> but that was the day that the universe will always remember. I believe the sun set at 2.45 p.m. that day. Tragic. And though this is true, in part, thank God for that church, a young Anastasia loved Bishop Patterson and understood that she was going through the pressing, the beating, and the shaking for a reason. It was the year of the bicentennial and Americans everywhere were celebrating. One day as a young Anastasia was coming off of a phone call, she found herself quite tired from praying for world leaders like Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, Bishop Desmond Tutu, etc. She gathered her bags and locked the office door before heading down the stairs when she heard the Holy Ghost say, turn around my child. When she did, she saw a young Michael standing <laughs> with his cousin Brandon. He was mid-sentence when the remaining words he sought to speak got caught in his throat upon seeing her face. Uh -huh. We hear tell that her face shone with a brilliant, glorious light in that moment. But it just so happened she was standing under, under the church skylight. So <laughs> A young Michael basically moonwalked over to her and said, Hello, I am Michael and I would appreciate getting to know your name. The organ turned up and he asked again, Can I know your name? To which she replied, Are you prepared for Jehovah's return? When he responded, Yeah. <laughs> she smiled, thinking to herself, wow, I don't quite know what it is, but there's something special about him. She extended her hand for a handshake and replied, I'm Anastasia, nice to meet you. They exchanged pleasantries, and she left him with the residue of the spirit on him. He couldn't shake the feeling. He had to follow up on this angel from on high. Since he would only be in town for a short while, he knew he needed to act fast. The next day, as she was entering the church to begin her day's work, she saw a young Michael in a full double-breasted suit, <laughs> complete, complete with Stacey Adams gators, leaning up against the wall. She stopped in her tracks as he slowly approached and took her hand. He looked deep into her eyes and said, you know, I will only be here another day and a half. <laughs> I happen to know there will be a great revival happening tonight, and I would love it if you would accompany me. After receiving an in invitation to worship, she was beside herself. She blinked, and a powder-like substance shot out of her eyes. I believe those were supposed to be tears. She shakily replied, yes. She was overcome with joy. Following that, they entered a relationship which was not without its trials, but a young Anastasia, being who she was, was unmoved. She and the young Michael began calling one another and holding sweet conversations where he would read the Song of Solomon to her. <laughs> oh, oh. Her grandmother, Mother Harper, caught wind of the joy of the Lord that was happening between them one day and ascertained that this joy that they had, the world didn't give it, but she could take it away. <laughs> Since the phone calls were intercepted, a young Michael, much like Seely, was determined that nothing but death could keep him from her. So he started to write and even recorded, to, recorded himself speaking to her so she could hear his voice. And like Michael Jackson said, remember the time when they fell in love. Mm. First Lady Michael Jackson was an American singer. <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> there was a time when a young bell bottom sporting Michael visited a young big-haired Anastasia in Memphis, and at which point her grandmother, Mother Harper, ironically and unexpectedly urged Michael, if you love her, you will marry her. Mm. Michael thought to himself, how can I marry her when I have a chemistry test due next week? <laughs> I don't have the time. Whether that was reverse psychology on a young 17, 18 year old Michael or not, who knows, but he got the gist. After employing various methods to get to one another, a young Anastasia finally moved out and got her own place. When a young Michael would visit, they, would spend, they were able to spend quality time together, but always with a friend right in the next room to make sure only the Holy Ghost fire was burning. <laughs> After six years of dating and about three years on the job, a young Michael decided it was time to make sure no one ever offered to carry her Bible for her again, but no. At his parents' Roseland home by the piano, he asked her to be the apple of his eye. 
the wind beneath his wings, the cream and sugar in his office kitchen coffee, to take what's bitter and make it better, to be his partner in ministry, etc., so on and so forth. She excitedly answered, yes! Anastasia couldn't help but know this was, that this was coming soon because it, in her famous words, she's the best. I mean, who else in the galaxy could he possibly have chosen? Honestly, truly. After getting married, they moved into one, an, into one of her mother's buildings and, and there was a good amount of things that transpired. Living in her mother's building in the South Shore neighborhood one day, they came home to find that the apartment had been robbed. The problem is only a young Michael's things were stolen. That was one blinding incident, and young Michael almost thought it was a setup. He doesn't know that a young Anastasia's clothes were covered by, like the Ark of the Covenant, so they couldn't touch her things. There was another time when someone broke into young Michael's car and stole his record and tapes. He couldn't fathom what they might want to do with his personal recordings, but that wasn't the strangest thing. There was an apple in the car that they had picked up, bitten, and decided that they shouldn't eat of the tree of knowledge and evil. So they left the rest of the apple there in the car. That was one. There were arguments that went something to the tune of Michael, who pays the bills? Anastasia, who owns the bill? The lady brought his parents home, and the rest is history and her story. Over the years, Anastasia grew in grace and began working in, with Michael in Southern Illinois jurisdiction. She worked locally at Emmanuel as the youth leader. Most memorably from those times was that she was the lady with a lot of body in her hair that moved a lot when she shouted and went right back into place when she was done. It was so pretty. But she also used to make me pretty mad. Talk about no nonsense. You couldn't even talk and play with your friends while the sermon was going on. Amen. So irritated. If we didn't stop talking, she would make us move up next to or in front of her, or she would make us sit next to our mothers or a church mother, which was no fun. Just a whole row of older mothers and young children just nodding off during service. Terrible. There were no phones or iPads at that time. To entertain ourselves, all we had to do was fold or tear up programs and fans before getting swatted in the mouth by the back of someone's hand for doing so. Those were good times. I didn't like her, but I loved her. She went on to be appointed as Mother Martin's assistant in Lakeshore District, assistant district missionary in Lakeshore District and was a responsible financier ultimately finding her way to the state and international finance department. Most of you are familiar with Ashley's Quality Care, where she has been instrumental since its inception, actually writing up the business plan, and, including, and her faithful service has included her working alongside missionary Frankie Reddit, and is currently serving as a CFO today. When she stepped into the role of First Lady, she took on the feat fearlessly. The announcement and appointment to pastor was made at Bishop Owens' funeral by design. I recall personally experiencing a barrage of emotions in that moment. Bitter tears of grief were sweetened with appreciation and celebration in that very moment. I turned my attention to a young Michael who choked back tears and chinned up to meet this duty bravely. A young Anastasia could be seen falling into the arms of First Lady Melanie Porter at which point I believe some of the strength that Sister Melanie had gathered in her role flowed from heart to heart in that moment. Since then, she has been anointed to serve and appointed to positions up to District Missionary of the D.A. Reed Senior District. Her faithfulness has certainly paid off in more ways than one. I recall being a young girl and telling her I wanted to be just like her when I grew up. Her response was Class A. She said, no, don't be just like me, because then who is going to be like you? In that moment, a self-assured woman appeared with sage advice. Instead of being flattered or saying she would help me to be like her, she recognized that this was a teachable moment to share with a young girl that shaping her own destiny was germane to her existence. My takeaway from her response, as you can see, has never left. She continues to be the one to pray for you, Make sure you are pursuing your destiny and God's will for your life. She is always available and make sure you are responsible to your you are your response to life is strong and certain, leaving little room for self-pity or doubt. 
She admonishes young women and old to pursue holiness and to be unrelenting about it, though she is not deceived. She also understands real life and the hurdles associated therewith. She just doesn't make excuses for them. I could go on for a year and a half about First Lady Richardson, and we would probably still have more to talk about, but Sabrina's only has so much chicken. <laughs> First Lady, I appreciate your love, your womanhood, your faith, your strength, the lessons, the blessings, and so much more. Please know that you are appreciated, and it is my pleasure to celebrate here with you tonight. I forever have your back, front, middle, and sides. I love you forever and a day, and I wish you wish you a very happy 60th birthday year. Amen.